Hi, hope you're having a wonderful day. My name is Bob and I'm with JD Squared. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to use the cam marker feature in Camelot. That's the software that we supply with our rotary cutters. Now, what a cam marker does, it allows you to place a circular mark around the tube or pipe to use as a reference further down the line. Maybe somebody wants a weld or bracket at that point and you wanna do it. Now, currently, Camelot can only place cam markers on parts that were created in Camelot. Um, so if you import a structure, a round tube structure, you will not be able to put cam markers on it. And what you would have to do in a, situa like, a situation like that is actually put a groove mark in the physical tubing that you want to import into, into Camelot. Now, Camelot can pick up that that mark right there and use that as a reference mark to mark because it's a physical feature. However, cam markers in Camelot are not physical features. They're just instructions to Camelot. I want you to draw a circle around this tubing at this particular location. So without further ado, let's get after it. I need to put on my glasses so I could see and it would probably be nice if I got out of your way here. Okay, there we go. Let's first thing we need to do is go to create a frame. We're going to create a very simple part. Okay, let's add a tube to it. We're making it out of inch and a quarter. I've already selected the profile. If I did it, I could have clicked that button and selected it, but we already have. And we're going to do it out of inch and a quarter, schedule 40 pipe. Let's add a tube. We're going to start at X, X, Y, Z, zero, which is a common spot, pot, or spot. Let's go up 12 inches on the Z axis. Like I say, we're making a very simple, simple part. And then we are going to add another point and we're just gonna move over 12 inches on the Y axis. And that's our part right there. Now, if we close this part down and we apply and close, I mean, there's the part we just created. Now, if I create a job for it, let's do that. Camelot right now is calculating how much the tube is gonna stretch in the middle of the bend. And that's gonna be shown as a green band on the unbent section of tube. We're going to call this test because, you know, yeah, I want to replace it. I do a lot of tests. There's your bent section is the green band. The red band is what we call the lead in. Now the lead in is there and I could show you a little better here. This is actually a page out of the directions of our model 32 bender and it explains this. But if we go up here to this diagram here, you could see we have an edge on all of our dies that has been cut or milled flat. That's our marking edge. That's where we're going to place the mark as a reference because we can't see any marks that are up at the tangent point. In other words, let me zoom up here. The tangent point is where the tube is actually going to start bending, which would be right here and here. This is where our mark is up here. Now we do this because if we didn't do that, and we started bending, and let's just say we cut the, the die off at 180 degrees, dead square, that sharp edge will put a mark inside your bend, ruining the part. So what we do is we give ourselves a little fudge room, about seven eighths of an inch, to allow the tubing to settle into the die without marking the tube. That's what we call the lead in, and that's this distance from that mark to the tangent point of the bend. Now, typically on our dies, that lead in is seven eighths of an inch, just so you'll know. So that's what the red is, is showing you. So when Camelot marks the tube, it puts all the marks down. It puts down, for instance, right here, let me roll this around. You can see right here, it's telling us bin number one. There's only one bin, but if there was multiple bins, it would bin number one, two. It's also telling you that you're gonna make a 90 degree bend at this location. And if we look at the marks, you've got two straight lines. These lines are gonna be placed at the top edge of the die right here. They're going to be right here, you know. Now, if we go back, the outline, this line out here is the one that's going to line up on the mark. So when you load this into the, your die, you're going to see this mark, you're going to see the straight lines, but you won't see this inside mark. It's really there more for a reference. However, it works out perfectly because the customer who requested this video is got a, he's got a job to do and he wants to place a mark two inches from the B 
bend start. He wants to place a mark over here somewhere two inches in from that. So how are we going to do that? First thing we're going to need to do is close out this job because cam markers have to be placed on the part before you create the job. So unfortunately with Camelot version one, it doesn't really have a history um, yet. Camelot two that we're working on, it, it's going to be a while before that software comes out, probably hopefully we we're hoping the end of this year, but it, it could be as late as early next year. It will have a history and you'll be able to change these cam markers. But however, right now Camelot is what it is. So what we're going to do um, is we're going to edit this part. And then we're going to edit the frame here. We're in edit mode. Now, cam markers can only be placed on a part that was created in Camelot. Um, so if you import a part that you did, you cannot, you cannot put a, uh, a cam marker in Camelot. What you could do, though, is you'll know where the end of the bend is. Let's just say, for instance, we imported this part. What you would need to do is put a groove around the part two inches away from that face. Very slight little groove. Uh, very small. I'm talking like, you know, a few thousands of an inch wide, maybe a few thousands of an inch deep. And the idea is to give us a hard edge that we can pick in Camelot because Camelot on imported parts only knows edges. So if there's no edge, it's not going to pick up any marks you have. Um, and it has a lot to do with step files. When you import a step file, there's no markings are imported in the step file, only the, the actual physical structure itself. But if you're creating the part in Camelot, we could add a cam marker. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, what we need to do is place a reference point on the part. Now, when we did that nesting, um, we're going to, it looked like to me it was wanting to start the bend from this right here, you know. So we're going to find that out pretty darn quick. If this isn't the start, the, the end that it starts on, then we'll reverse. I'll tell you what's going on here in a minute. Let's go ahead. And what we're going to do is we want to, first thing, we want to add a reference point on the bent section itself. So let's go ahead, add a reference point on the bend. Now, whenever we add reference points, it's going to place it at the middle of between the two points that we're selecting. So on this particular reference point, it put it, put it between this point and that point 50%. We don't want that. In this case, we want it to be 0%, and that's going to put the mark right at the end of the bend. That's what we want. Now, let's go ahead to point 1 here, and we're going to add another reference point. Add a reference point on the part, and it's going to assign it automatically 50% up. Remember I mentioned that a minute ago. That's what happens. We don't want to work in percentages because it, it's not going to tell us anything any good here. We want this point to be two inches from that point. So how are we going to do it? Let's unclick percentage value. Now we're in inch mode or metric mode, if, if that's what you're running Camelot in, and we're six inches. Now all we got to do is go up here to measure points, select two points. We're going to select that point and that point, and it's telling us we're 2.35 or 375 inches away, two and three eighths of an inch. So let's close this. Let's go back to edit frame. And on this point here, which is our reference point there, we're going to, we're going to add that three eighths of an inch, which will move it closer to that point. Now, if we measure select two points. We measure from here to here. Lo and behold, we have our two inches. We're done. So let's close it out. Let's apply it. Let's see if I selected which bend uh, Camelot is going to think it is. And I'm pretty sure Camelot always works from the end of the tube. So it should be the start in the tube where we started. It should be this one right here. So let's go ahead and make a job. All items or selected item. It doesn't matter. If you only have one item, if you select selected items, it's not going to ask you to select the item. It knows that there's only one item. All right, let's see what we're going to do here. We should see our cam marker. Once again, it's asking us to save the job. We'll call it test again. And, oh, I made a, a mistake. And I, and I, I like it when I make mistakes um, because it shows you the mistake that you're probably going to make. All right, let's go back to edit, edit frame. I, I do this every time, by the way. There's a tab right here. If we go to our reference mark here, 2.38, it's really 3.75, but for some reason Camelot's rounding it off. Um, let's go ahead and select this tab, Cam Marker, and all we got to do is check Cam Marker right here. I should have done that a minute ago. I apologize. Let's close the tool. 
and we're going to apply and close. Now let's make a job and we should see our cam marker this time. Patience is a virtue, I'm told. Camelot now is calculating all the stretch, everything else that it's got to do to, to make this part. All right, and there's your cam marker right there, two inches away. Now, the way we can kind of check this too. Now, this is a rough check. If you're going to measure, um, come on. Okay, oh, start, select two points. If we go from here to here, we got 2.09. That's because it didn't snap to the point I was very close. Tells you we're basically two inches away. So there you go. There's your cam marker. So if we were to add an operation to this job, let's say we're going to go out and cut it. Notice we have different layers here. One of them is called a cam marker. So if we tell it, I want you to mark that with a marker tool, not the scriber. We don't want this to be permanent. We say, okay, it adds the operation here, and there's your mark. Now, if we wanted to add another operation, to do the bin markers, we would select bin markers. And once again, we would probably choose a marker, not the scriber, because we don't want it to be permanent. Say, okay. Now, if we go there, we got that. Now, the only thing left to do would be to, in order to process this part, would be to add two more jobs. We're gonna go to start cuts. This one will be plasma. Pick our, our what we're cutting it with, say 45 amp shielded. Say, okay. And let's add one more item to it, our in cut. It remembered, or didn't remember it, we're gonna go 45 amp shielded, and we're gonna use the plasma, we're gonna say okay. All right, so now you can see where that's our in cut. We're gonna go ahead and drag our start cut, and what I did is I just held down the left button and I dragged it around. I want the start cut to be first, then I wanna do, I guess it doesn't really matter, but let's do the bin markers next, and I'm just drag, I'm just clicking on these, holding it down, dragging it up and down. I would like to work from this end to that end. So right now we're doing there. Now we're doing the cam markers. And last but not least, we're gonna cut the part off. That's our part. Now, if we wanna nest the tube, let's just say we have a 120 inch piece of tube out there. Let me drop this down just a little bit. And we're gonna override the desired number of parts. Let's say I want three of these and we're gonna nest it. And if we zoom out, there you go. There's your, um, there's your three parts all nested nice and pretty, ready to be cut. Run the post processor. That'll get us our G code. We'll be popping up over here and ask us how do we want to save it, what name. We'll call it test again. <clears throat> and there's your G code. All we got to do now is take the G code. We could hit save and select it and it's already there by the way it it saved it take that file come over and just head on out right here head on out to the um copy to my usb head on out and um cut apart anyway that's all there is to know about cam markers they're very simple they just remember they're just used as reference point to help you mark things in the future anyway it's been my pleasure to show you how to do this if you've got other questions like this gentleman had Please email support, and hopefully very quickly I could shoot you a small video like this. Thank you for tuning in. Hope you have a great day. Talk to you later. Bye.